Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, City Hall. Welcome to Council Chambers and welcome to a meeting of the Los Angeles City Council for today, Tuesday, June 7th, 2005. The City Council meets every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Meetings are open to the public and we do invite you to join us. For members of the public unable to attend council meetings, we can be viewed live on your cable station, Channel 35. We can also be viewed live via webcast from the city's homepage or heard via council phone. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Cardenas, Garcetti, Grohl, Hahn, LaBonge, Ludlow, Miskowski, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Smith, Riragosa, Weissstein, Padilla, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. The council is officially in session. Uh, before beginning with the matters appearing on today's agenda, this being Tuesday, the first meeting of the week, it is our custom to uh, conduct our salute to the flag. Ms. Grohl, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please stand, uh, put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. My son is at Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, first order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Ms. Misikowski moves and Mr. Zine seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Smith moves and Ms. Hahn seconds. Uh, Mr. President, before beginning the regular agenda, there is a request to continue item number nine, and that's from Mr. Weiss, and he would like to continue that matter to Friday, June 10th. Okay, members, any objection to continuing item number nine? Seeing none, so ordered. And uh, Ann Williams, Martha Cox, and James Cordaro, please be advised item nine will not be considered today. We're moving that to Friday. Next item, please. On the regular agenda, items one through 21 are items for which public hearings have been held. 
members items 1 through 21 now before us public hearings have been held on these items in committee a motion from the floor would be required to reopen the public hearings seeing no such motion do we have any requests for specials uh, excuse me mr. president on item number 21 there are two reports on the file a motion is required and I believe the recommendation is to adopt the personnel committee report and also I believe there's a request from mr. Smith to continue item number 16 for two weeks which is June 21st okay if there's no objection to continuing item 16 the item is continued as well. Mr. Zine moves the personnel committee report on item 21. Mr. Lavange. Yeah, thank you. Uh, members, I'd like to reconsider an item we had on Friday. Is that possible? Uh, <laughs> it, it is. Let's, let's dispense okay. with dispatch of items right, first. And then I want to get back to that. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, members, items 1 through 21. Before us, any other specials? Any other specials? Seeing none. Seven. Item number seven, call special by Mr. Parks. If there's no further request for specials, 12, let's 12. open the roll on the balance of the items. Mr. Zine, 12. 12? Okay, 12 call special by Mr. Zine. On the balance of the items, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Items one and two are ordinances and do carry over for a second reading. Next items, please. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 22 through 38, 10 votes are required for consideration. And we do have cards on items 30 and 33. We'll call those items special. On uh, the balance of the items, I do not have requests from members of the public to address the council. Public hearings are open and closed. Colleagues, any specials? Items 22 through 38. 22 through 38. If there's no request for specials, let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those items are approved. Items 22 through 28 are ordinances and also carry over for a second reading. Next item, please. On the continuation agenda, item number 39 uh, is an item for which public hearing has been held and there are two reports on the file. Okay, well, Ms. Gruel calls item 39 special. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. President, do you wish to take up public comment at this time? Uh, before we do that, Mr. Labonge, on a motion for reconsideration. Uh, uh, just uh, two things, uh, Mr. President. On item number 35 today, is that a $50,000 reward for the motion in the untimely, tragic, violent death of Maria uh, Johanna uh, in the Hollywood area? Is it $50,000 for the arrest and conviction? Okay, good. Just call that. Thank you very much. And also, I apologize, uh, Mr. President, Madam Clerk. There was an item last council meeting. And is it within our rules to reconsider something that? It is, as long as it wasn't sent forthwith. However, we need to know the details, the item number and the council file number, if you have it. Great. Can you give regarding? me a minute? Thank you so much. Okay. Thank Let you, Mr. President. We, uh, we now uh, turn to general public comment for today's meeting. The council calls forward Mort Allen, Paul uh, Zwerdling, Don Garza, and Guyane Metchumayan. This is general public comment, an opportunity for members of the public to address the council on matters within our jurisdiction, but not appearing on today's agenda. Mr. Allen. Good morning. Um, last week or week and a half ago, I attended the um, International Council of Shopping Centers uh, convention in Las Vegas. There were 40,000 de delegates worldwide. Uh, 81 cities had booths there. Uh, all our local developers like uh, um, Rick Russo, uh, Ed Roski, uh, Jerry Snyder, everybody had booths there. It was a phenomenal thing. Unfortunately, because of the transition, our city did not have a booth, but we were well represented by our local developers. Uh, the city of New York held a party on Tuesday night at the Wynn Hotel that had to have cost a half a million dollars. They took over the hotel. They had unbelievable and just promoting their business. Um, is uh, Tom and Wendy and um, Janice, you know, my better half, Amy, is in the uh, cart business. She owns the carts and kiosks at the Grove, at Baldwin Plaza, almost most of the major malls. So she and I went around and we visited all 81 cities and we kind of took a survey and a toll of it all. And 
what I would like to do is just really fast let you know some of the comments that I got. Number one, every developer said that we have the best building and safety department in the country, that they can, that it takes them six months to get through planning. The minute they hit building and safety, they get inspections the same day, that we are so user friendly and that's why we have all the development. Now on that comment, I'll say you really cannot take away their one call center because everybody says that those people give them all the answers, they get inspections in a couple hours, and I think that has to be revisited. Um, in a perfect world, you'd take zoning administration and put that under building and safety and leave planning for just the planning measures. The other major comment I got, which is very interesting, was about our airports. And, and everybody wants to know why we do things the way we do. The city of Ontario told, told me that they're dying to get all of our flights over there because it's their biggest economic engine that they have. If I can ask you to conclude, please, we have okay, other speakers we'll, waiting. Okay, uh, I think that uh, the comments that we got from all the different departments, uh, from the different things here in the city are so positive that we really got to look into uh, where we go from here in uh, promoting the city throughout Southern California. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Go ahead, sir. On Sunday, June 5th, 2005, LA Times columnist Steve Lopez wrote an inspiring article about the Dorothy May Medical Clinic on 89th and Broadway. 2,500 patients go see Sister Terry Hannah for their life. I want to read what her patients think of her. She is a five-foot, courageous Jewish nurse practitioner, registered nurse, who has provided loving care and compassion as the inspirational leader of the Dorothy May Medical Center. A single mother of five, she has risen from a solitary year on public aid to build a clinic and save so many lives in South Los Angeles. She is a truly humble hero and role model who has implemented the teachings of Jesus Christ each day of her life. I have the Star of David in right hand. I have the crucifix in the left hand. This is what has carried us through on a two-year struggle to expand the Dorothy May Medical Clinic and provide decency and justice to the people of South LA. The same justice that my father, my late father, spent 30 years to try to do. Since he is no longer with us, I come in his place. I bring today the crucifix and the Star of David, and in it is a message, unity equals success. In Steve Lopez's story, and God bless him for coming down, because nobody else did until Steve came down. And he will always be remembered, and all of his children will always be remembered by all the great legends that have come through this town and throughout this country. The story recounted the heroic David and Goliath struggle of the clinic's owners, Terry Hanna and Dr. Michael Singleton. Dr. Singleton saved the life of the Times Bureau Chief, Tony Perry, 365 days ago to the day that he interviewed Ms. Hanna and Dr. Singleton. We salute the LA Times for taking the guts, taking the action to come down to South LA and tell our story. We consider them family. We consider every reporter our brothers. We are fortunate to get our story told because Yesterday, I received emails from tons of people in Los Angeles who have not had their story told, who have had clinics terminated, ended, people dying. I think of old Jiminy McDonald, who died in his own vomit, own vomit, 18 hours, left alone. Someone that we would have loved to see before it got so bad. Sir, if I may ask you to conclude, please. We have yes. other speakers waiting. We have gotten the first SBA approval in 35 years for a clinic. 
We have spent a year and a half to get a building permit. We received that in March of 2005, but the costs have gone up by hundreds of thousands of dollars. We seek very no money from the city of LA. We seek only decency. We want a factory built clinic allowed on this lot that we own. Thank you. Let me let me finish. Please. Please. We want basically as much recognition. We will bring this to Oprah. We will bring this to to uh, 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 Don Francisco, we will bring this as far as it has to. We would like your support. Finally, we would like human decency to be practiced down in South LA. We want basic trash cans, trees on the street. We want an alley that's going to be paved. It has been 70 years since it's not been paved. We want respect. We don't want 5,000 lowriders shooting each other as eight people got shot on our lot. Eight months ago. That same lot, several weeks ago, we had 200 children playing like they should play in any other district. This matter affects every single one of you. Nurse Hannah and Dr. Singleton stopped tuberculosis from reaching into all of your districts, from people who come up from the border who are looking for a place to eat, a okay. place to live. I will conclude this and say it is time it is time to understand the Star of David for its courage. It is time to understand the Christ crucifix for its compassion. There are no more lobbyists other than me, and I am not a paid lobbyist. But I have all the compassion of everybody that has walked in this chamber. God bless you. I hope you understand this message. Thank you very much. I have a handout Mr. for everyone. Mr. Parks, did you wish to say something? Thank you very much, Mr. President. I think. Uh, We've been involved at the, on that issue for the last several months, and it comes down to uh, a request for a variance that we're unable to give uh, as to their construction. And so we've asked them to go through the process. Uh, we're going to assist them through the process. And with this uh, New Year's budget, we will be attacking alleys, as we've been talking about over the last couple of years. So those issues will be resolved. But it's a variance that we can't uh, waive, and it's something that's uh, part of the overall zoning issues that we all hold dear as it relates to ensuring the community is appropriately uh, being addressed as they're building projects. So we'll help them through the process. Uh, we've been out there. We've surveyed their issue. Everybody wants to support them, but they have to go through the process. Okay. Mr. Garza? Council members, um, um, I guess it's time now to get back to business. We had a good time. I had a good time telling you guys how much I loved you last week. Ken, but today... I'm here because I want to talk about my neighborhood council. There have been some major problems with the uh, structure of our neighborhood council that have been going on for the past couple of, of years, actually. Um, but we haven't had the courage, and people like me to have the courage to really challenge our neighborhood council, its structure, the way things are done, the way some things are not done as transparently as they should be. Um, we, we don't even have... Our co-chair system for our committees, the community of which I live in is completely not even, whenever we put a resume in to want to be a, a co-chair on any one of these committees, we're completely bypassed. Just recently, we had a, a chair of one of the committees who has recently moved out of our boundaries from their work and they were elected to represent that area. Um, but they will not relinquish the position of power that they have on these executive committees on our governing board even when they move out of with from within our boundaries and they will find any little thing some sort of nexus to say that they they're allowed to continue to do these things i i personally believe that we need to find a way to address these issues another issue is the fact that latinos are completely not even on our governing board we're very underrepresented on our governing board um, the outreach committee, finally, after shaking them up a little bit, finally they're saying, well, why don't we have a subcommittee? Why don't you do it? But the fact remains that we have a new mayor in the city of Los Angeles. We have a, a mayor, uh, the people have spoken, and they said they want a, f a breath of fresh air in the city of Los Angeles. And I think that not just goes for the city at large and, and, and issues such as um, city structures, and but it also 
involves our neighborhood councils. We have a lot of members on our neighborhood council, chairs, co-chairs, that are actual people that work within the city of Los Angeles, that represent certain interests, that represent developers, and, and the residents of this neighborhood, which is the downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, are completely underrepresented. These are issues that are gonna be coming out from my Central City East community, we're gonna be doing this over the next three months. It's not just gonna be me, it's gonna be other people because we need to make sure that not only do, is the city gonna have a fresh start and fresh air, a breath of fresh air with our new administration, with the new mayor, but our neighborhood councils that have been stymied with conflicts of interest and people that represent the administration can have another breath of fresh air within. And, and like I said, I voted for Han, but at the same time, it's time that neighborhoods are allowed to continue to work on keeping their streets clean instead of the neighborhood council being a lobbyist for big developers. Um, but I lobby for them too. So it, it's gonna be the next three months, I'll be bringing people in here. The other, just to let you know, that when, when the downtown Los Angeles neighborhood council went to certification, it was said by the Department of Neighborhood empowerment that if the citizens in Central City East were ignored that there is the possibility that they would allow us to create our own new Skid Row Neighborhood Council. I don't want to see it get to that point because I worked hard on creating this downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council but I, I'm looking at Janice Hahn over there and I'm asking her to bring up the fact that we have members on our neighborhood council who do not, are not within our boundaries, who are no longer stakeholders within our, in our boundaries, are going through the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment finding these little nexuses to keep them on our, in our, in our, on our neighborhood council, and there are plenty of talented people within our community that need to be included in this, and I would hope, Janice Hahn, that I'm, I'm gonna bring it to your committee and the other committees. We just need Thank a you. breath of fresh air. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and our final speaker, uh, Guyane Mechtumayan. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, we are here about uh, my cousin's business, that she bought a franchise at West Hills, at Lowe's. Uh, franchise name is Woody's Chicago Style Hot Dog. We are having a big problem with the health department. The day when uh, she got the permit, she asked the inspector if we can bring a refrigerator instead of ice box, which you have to fill everything inside and you put ice in it. And they told, yes, you can bring it. We come and we give you sticker and you pay $66. The day when she received the refrigerator, the health department personnel came and he gave us a very, very big trouble that this is forbidden, you can do that. You have to write a plan, we have to review the plan, you have to pay $300, maybe yes or maybe no. After that, you have to carry the refrigerator to your commissary every day. Uh, Mr. President, for that small, Refrigerator, we, we have to buy a big truck, lifter truck, to take it to the commissary every day and to come back. They forced us to reconstruct the uh, franchise machine, and they damaged that. We have all the pictures with us. We're throwing stuff because of their requirement. I have all the pictures. If you can, Thank if you. I can uh, represent to you right now. Okay. If you want to submit that to the sergeant. Thank you very much. Please help us. Okay. This concludes general public comment for today's meeting. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Next item, Mr. President, is item number seven. Call special by Council Member Parks, and there is an amending motion that has been distributed. Mr. Parks, item number seven. <laughs> you and your buddy. I told you I should put this in my room and wake me up. Mr. Parks. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have item seven in the, the mid-year, and uh, we have a, a motion that's being circulated to uh, make a change uh, in this document uh, that will provide funds uh, for the uh, Van Nuys, uh, uh, construction at Van Nuys City Hall, and so we'll turn it over to Bill and advise what that alteration will be. We have a request to transfer, uh, well, no, 
to um, to authorize a res reserve fund loan of 5.9 million for the Van Nuys City Hall construction project. This is only a loan. The intent is to pay back this money by using seismic funds, seismic bond funds. The um, the, the the need for the loan arose as a consequence of not completing a reconciliation report on the seismic bond report in time for today's action. We will have that done and the, the money should be reimbursed um, by the first quarter of, of next fiscal year. This motion also speaks to um, assigning some sites and facility funds from Rec and Parks of 350, well, I'm sorry, a total of $500,000 for a skate park in CD14. Rec and Parks identified the additional funds that the, um, the intent is to expand the, um, the size of this, this park, the skate park, from about 8,000 square feet to about 12,000 square feet. This again is sites and facility funds, it's not general fund. So we have two things, a reserve fund loan that will be repaid from the size we bond, and second, uh, on an appropriation of, of money from sites and facility for a skate park in CD14. Anything further, members? Seeing none, let's open the roll on this item as amended. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item number 12, call special by council member Zine. Mr. Zine. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, make note of item number 12, which is an issue dealing with uh, the personnel, the city workforce, and we encountered some situations where employees were being terminated or about to be terminated and they jumped into another department. What this will call for now is the department that is the individual seeking employment from do a thorough background check and if an individual is trying to alleviate some discipline by going to another department, uh, that will be known and the corrective measure will be taken. Uh, there were a number of situations that brought this to our attention. I appreciate the support on this. It should help the departments in getting additional personnel, whether it be a new employee or an employee transferring from one department to another to try to elude some discipline involved in some type of a situation that would cause for discipline or dismissal uh, on occasion they have uh, fled to another department within the city. This will correct that situation um, and it mandates the general managers do specific follow-up and guidelines and I appreciate the personnel department, Maggie Whalen's support and cooperation in this which should give us a uh, much better workforce and uh, keep the uh, people accountable to the taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Zine. Other members of the council wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item number 30, call special for cards from the public. Uh, item number 30 and uh, actually item 33, we'll have a concurrent public hearing and call forward Sylvia Lynn Hawkins. This is for both item 30 and 33. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ms. Sylvia Lynn Hawkins. Uh, I would do number, item number 30, then 33. I would say no on uh, item number 30, redistricting or changing in the street, road, city, sign, statues, state, or naming any corner new street block should at this time stop. Because of, of the middle war that we are involved in, also adding or removing city names in California or in any 50 states must cease at this time. On item number 33, Councilman Lalo, before extending this contract of a new transit business deal, we must begin to build new escalators on main streets, north to the south, no cars on the streets. East to the west, all cars must be redirected to the freeway. Building a new flying car on a beam in the sky that come down to other freeways. MTA and rapid buses must all be deleted. No more buses, only dash buses and escalators 
to free the streets for military tanks, firemen, ambulances, and police cars Thank for you. military purposes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. This includes public comment for items 30 and 33. Members of the council wishing to speak on these items? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Those are approved. Next item, please. Uh, next item is item number 39, call special by Council Member Gruel, and there are two reports on the file. Ms. Gruel. Uh, okay, Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and colleagues. This item um, in Budget Committee, we had a, a unanimous 4-0 vote at the time, but I, I thought I'd give a little bit of history before we, I know there's some public comment. Um, this has to do, uh, do with the allocation that was budgeted in this year's MICLA uh, funds, MICLA program of $13.4 million to be able to start spending money on catch basins. For two or three years, um, I worked very hard with uh, then CLA uh, Ron Deaton to put money in the budget for beginning some of our TMDL compliance, most notably our first ones with uh, the Los Angeles River trash TMDL, but beginning to look at um, a number of things from modular catch basin inserts that could filter out everything from the trash that we throw in our streets that washes out into our ocean to other items as well. Um, we got this in this year's MICLA program and then went to the voters with the idea of Proposition O after that. Um, Councilwoman Perry and I, uh, Councilwoman Perry's out of town for a couple days, but she and I worked very hard, as did so many people around this horseshoe, Councilmember Weiss, Councilmember Labonte, Councilmember Hahn, um, Councilmember Reyes, to really make sure that that was passed um, and to go out there and to campaign for it, along with many members of the environmental community who are here. So I would make the following metaphor, which I made in committee, which is that I think it's appropriate for us not to displace all of this money um, in the same way that if Measure A had passed for public safety and we had had $50 million uh, in funding for buying police cars that was already in that year's budget, if suddenly when Measure A had passed we said, well, now that Measure A has passed, don't worry about that maintenance of effort. We can now take this new money and take care of stuff we had already budgeted. I think that's the wrong um, trust to have with the, the voters, and it was very clear in those discussions that we had that this would be for new funding. That's point one. Point two is that we all know probably that $500 million will not bring us into full TMDL compliance on all of the different TMDLs we have to bring water back to a swimmable, drinkable, and fishable standard. Uh, talk to folks in Bureau of Sanitation, they feel that way. Talk to independent engineers, environmental community, others, we know that. The longer we delay as well, the more expensive these fixes become to get heavy metals, to get bacteria, to get nitrogen, to get contaminants into trash out of our water bodies will be very expensive and the longer we wait, the more expensive it can become. So the idea that perhaps we'd att attach $13 million down the line is gonna be much more than $13 million, that's a balloon. So I understand, and I, as much as anybody else in this horseshoe, am proud of our bond ratings and making sure that these new fiscal policies that we have in place continue. And I think under the leadership of Councilmember Parks as Chair of Budget and Finance, we've really made some tremendous steps that way. In committee, I was willing to compromise, not uh, um, feeling great about not spending 13.4, but to say $6.7 million, that's what we had a 4-0 vote to do. I understand there may be some things that are not uh, PROPO eligible that we can use MICLA funding for, but the most important thing is for us not to delay, to get this money out there and to spend it. We made that deal with the voters when we put this before them. I know when Mr. Deaton uh, talked about this uh, with myself and when we uh, got this in the budget after two or three years of lobbying, this was a critical piece that was a building block for PROPO to be able to test technologies, to be able to say then when PROPO money was to flow, it would be on proven things that were and so I would urge your support of the budget and finance report or some iteration of that that continues to make sure that this additional $6.7 million of funding goes out um, as soon as possible. Thank you. And I would open uh, the public hearing or public comment if, if there's no objection. Yeah, that's uh, without objection. Call forward Mark Gold, Fran Diamond, and Tracy Egoscu. Good morning, Council. My name is Mark Gold. I'm the Executive Director of Heal the Bay. I'm also a member of the Propo Citizen Oversight Advisory Committee. On behalf of Heal the Bay, 
we oppose the use of Prop O funds for any pollution prevention measures already approved in previous city budgets. As you know, a record 76% of the voters approved Proposition O, and their greatest concerns were both clean water and the need for accountability on the expenditure of funds. For the Council's first allocation of Prop O funds to be used for budget backfill purposes is unconscionable and against the very spirit of public support for Prop O for new funding. Today is not a vote on the need or merit of catch basin inserts for keeping trash out of the LA River and Bayona Creek. Both the COAC and the Administrative Oversight Committee have reaffirmed that catch basin inserts are needed as soon as possible to comply with the trash TMDLs. No, today's vote is about following through on three years of discussion and last year's budget commitment of MICLA funds to get trash inserts installed as soon as possible. Why the city hasn't expected, expended any of these approved funds with a compliance deadline looming next year is beyond comprehension. Heal the Bay urges the council to follow through on the previous commitment of $13.4 million for trash inserts. Please do not raid the Proposition O funds for backfilling approved water quality expenditures. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Fran Diamond. I'm a member of the Regional Water Quality Board and also a member of the Citizens Advisory Committee for Proposition O. Proposition O was your promise to the voters that $500 million would be spent on future water quality improvements. They did not vote for using these funds for already budgeted projects. The City Council budgeted $13.2 million for catch basin inserts in the 0505, bud in the 0405 budget. This was necessary to meet the city's 20% trash reduction deadline of September of 06. This should have already been done. The voters, 76% of them, trust that you heard them. Do not violate their trust. You have an obligation to follow your initiative. You must follow it to the letter of the law. $13.2 million in MICLA funds should be spent on the catch basin inserts now. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tracy Goscu and I'm the Executive Director of the Santa Monica Baykeeper. I just ask and urge that you treat Prop O funds as sacred, as sacred as the voters of this city have done. It is a historic vote and the next time we go to the ballot and ask them to fund, we should have a clean record of our past practice regarding Prop O. Do the right thing here, give the 13 million that you've already allocated and have PROPO be used for future projects. The policy that this council has regarding not using budget items uh, is a policy, it's not the law and I urge you to do the right thing here. Thank you for listening to me, paying attention and for your time. This concludes uh, public comment on this item, we recognize council member Parks. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Fujioka to come up uh, the table, please. Also, do we have a rep from uh, CLA's office? Yeah, oh, Gary. Yeah, Gary. I didn't, I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, to ask some questions because I think. Uh, having gone through the 0405 budget process and having a part in putting these funds in place, uh, there may be some misunderstanding as to the rationale and the intent at that time. And uh, first of all, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Fujioka, on dealing with the budget, uh, what was your understanding of the rationale of putting the MICLA money in place at the time we were going forward on Prop O? At, at the time we put together the 4-5 budget and then through the, um, the subsequent approval process, we, we, we were not sure Prop O was going to pass. We were in the process of also working on that, on that proposition, but at that point in time, it was, it was, it was only a, a proposal, that being Proposition O. And so knowing that we had some legal requirements and, uh, and responsibilities to, to deal with some of the catch basins and so on, it, we did put money in our MICLA program um, to address that particular need. Okay. Did, uh, was that issue discussed in 0506 budget process uh, t 
to t uh, continue the uh, uh, use of Mikola for this purpose? Uh, y yes, it was. Mm -hmm. it was. It was discussed at one point. We had mentioned that given that um, subsequent to uh, the, the fiscal year of four or five budget, that Proposition O was passed, that we had another, another um, funding source that would handle the same, um, the, the, basically the same projects are related to the clean, the clean water initiative. Okay. And then uh, would Prop O be appropriate uh, f uh, funding source for catch basins? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And then also, could you give us a, a kind of overview of on the financial policies versus using Mikola and, and what uh, was voted on recently? The, there is a financial policy that speaks to um, um, use, if there's another funding source available to fund any initiative, that that funding source would be used first before we would use general fund dollars. And MICLA does represent general fund dollars. Okay. And then on Prop O with the $500 million bond, what is your understanding of the, of the length of the work plan? Of the length of the work plan? Length, length of the work plan. Is it, it, how soon will we exhaust that $500 million? Well, now that's the interesting question because we do, we're going through the process right now. We develop some eligibility criteria. Mm -hmm. We know that there are, there's some very significant needs in the, um, you know, throughout the city when it comes to our, our clean water initiative. Um, I would think no more than, say, what, three to five years? Yeah, my recollection is that um, the expectation is that would last about five years. They'd be committed well before that, but it would be spent within five years. And within that time, then the council would have to make a determination about whether to go back for the voters to, uh, okay. to get additional authorization. So all the projects won't be through in five years, but it'd be committed and they'd be in process. It will definitely be committed, and the expectation is that they may, in fact, be completed within five years. Okay. It, there's, there's an important point to this, because I understand the, the concerns of the environment community and the concerns of members of the council, special, especially Councilman Garcetti. We, we know that there are, um, there are projects or initiatives or, or, um, or work that has to be done that's, that's related to the Clean Water Initiative that, that may not be PROPO eligible. And so this money can be used for some of those initiatives. It's something that actually Jerry you know, um, came up with this recommendation. I think it's an excellent recommendation because the um, there's, there's no single answer to, you know, uh, to the Clean Water Initiative. It'll be the sum of many, many different parts. Some of those parts will be eligible for Proposition O. Others will not be. It would have to be um, augmented through our general fund. The, the MICLA funds that we, have, that we have available could be used to augment the Prop O funds, okay. but not, not replace. Yeah, I, I think if, if I could be a little more specific. Um, Prop O is a general obligation bond. It can only be used for real property. Now, the street sweeping vehicles, the vehicles that have to be used to clean out the catch basins, none of that is eligible for Prop O. Also, during the discussion about what to put on the ballot, there was some talk about an additional allocation for O&M. Uh, sanitation estimates that about 5% of the capital costs are going to be required every year to maintain these facilities. Now, what that means is that once this $500 million is spent, the general fund is going to have to come up with $25 million a year uh, uh, to maintain uh, these facilities. So there's a substantial general fund uh, commitment for vehicles and equipment that can't be financed through Prop O, uh, as well as ongoing maintenance. Okay. As far as looking at the budget finance uh, recommendations, uh, what's the, uh, we expect on the debt service if we used about $7 million of Mikola fund? About seven hundred thousand. About, <coughs> about half a million dollars, five to seven hundred thousand. Yeah, dollars. five to seven, depending on the interest rate. Okay, five to seven hundred thousand dollars for what a ten-year period? Uh, probably twenty. Twenty-year period. Yeah. 20. And so, what would be the cost by using the uh, Prop O bonds? Oh gosh, I, that would depend on the market. Uh, I mean, it varies a lot. Um, the, the, the Prop O would be higher rated than a Mikla issuance. Um, uh, you know, so it's, it can vary. I mean, the, the, the difference on $7 million is not great. It, mm -hmm. it really gets down to the policy issue and the re rec 
uh, the recognition mm -hmm. that um, subs substantial general fund money is going to be committed in addition to Prop O. Okay. And, and what's the impact on the structural deficit if we were to move forward on uh, using Mikula funds? A million dollars a year? A million dollars a year. A million dollars a year. <laughs> Uh, so one thing, uh, colleagues, and I, I support uh, Mr. Garcetti's concerns about uh, uh, what's perceived to be a prior commitment, but one of the things I would recommend as we move forward is that the EQ uh, committee looked at this. They uh, supported the CLA CAO's position. We have a subsequent report that was done by the uh, CAO and CLA June 2nd that reiterated their position that we support those two positions, but I'd also say that as we're spending that $500 million and looking at the work plan, as its individual projects come up that are not eligible, that they be brought to us so that we can be job specific as to what revenue we may use, whether it's general fund, MICLA, or whatever other resource we might have, as opposed to just putting a lump sum of money in with the bonds without a attached project that we've identified. And so I would uh, move that we uh, move the uh, EQ report and the June 2nd uh, CAO CLA report with that one addition that as uh, job specific projects come up that are ineligible, they brought to the council, the council can make a judgment as to what revenue source will then fund it. Ms. Misikowski. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Members, I, I was a part of the unanimous vote in budget and finance when Mr. Garcetti had suggested that we use MICLA instead of PROPO. But subsequent to that, we have gotten the report from the CLA and CAO, and um, I think that it, the Environmental Quality Committee, which had heard it earlier, did make the right suggestion. What we're hearing is that there are two potential sources of money. We're also hearing that one source of money, even if we split it, will cost us more. The MICLA bonds are lower rated, so the interest rate is higher. It costs us more to do that. That's general fund money that can be better used for a lot of different things. The issue on whether storm drain uh, catch basin um, gates are eligible for Prop O is absolutely clear. I don't know if you all remember, members, we all all supported Prop O, and the campaign for Prop O was to have us all go around making the O symbol in front of different things. I know I went in front of a catch basin because that was where the Prop O campaign was saying clean the water, clean the basins. So it is eligible. It would cost us more to do it, Mikla, and it's inconsistent with the policy that we just adopted part of 040 this year, part of going forward 0506 on the budget, saying we really should have source money used from source directed funds. Um, I think that, as is indicated, this is not to say that the general fund is never going to be used. In fact, just the opposite. When we adopted Prop O, when we started to put the list together, we clearly indicated that as Prop O was going to be money to start doing some of these things, it was a start. There was going to be general fund money needed to accompany and accommodate. The difference in interest between the two bond programs could be used to uh, help fund some of the equipment that can't be used by for Prop O to do the maintenance of the very things we're going to be constructing. There is ongoing, significant, serious commitment of this city to use general fund money to do the work that the Prop O bond will get started. Um, again, from the three perspectives that this is eligible Prop O, it's consistent with our financial policy, and thirdly, it will cost us more if we take any part of it out of MICLA versus Prop O uh, at this time under this bond for this program. I support the recommendation that Mr. Parks has made as our chair of budget and finance and uh, the CLA and CAO. And that's the Environmental Quality Committee. Ms. Gruel. Thank you, uh, Mr. Padilla, and thank you, uh, Mr. Garcetti, for your leadership on this issue. And I know Ms. Perry, um, who otherwise would have been here, uh, uh, similarly uh, feels very strongly about this issue and advocated uh, and participated in making Prop O a successful proposition and to fund the catch basins we're talking about today. And, and Mr. Parks, I appreciate your diligence and um, frugality and um, consistent message that you have. Uh, I, I think if um, we could today say we want to fund the full, full 13 million, I thought we had the votes here, I'd be 
standing up here, jumping on the table saying, let's go with that. Um, it sounds like there are still some questions and want to look at some options. And I think the message also um, that was made by Mr. Garcetti um, is the point that this is about commitment. Uh, we made a commitment to the environmental community a year ago to uh, fund these projects, uh, to put that $13 million on the table. And uh, I think it's our accountability that they're interested in today and in making sure that uh, the city of Los Angeles um, makes their promises and keeps those promises. And I think one of the things I've said, and I know Mr. Garcetti said as well, which is uh, if we were talking about LAPD police cars or some other kind of issue, we probably would not be having this discussion today um, because it would be harder. And I know Bill might not agree with me, but um, I think we want to say the sem same message as we do public safety, that environment, the environment is extraordinarily important to us. And so I think we need to recommit our uh, ability to clean our water supply. So the couple questions, and I know um, Mr. Fijok and Mr. Miller, some of the issues that have been brought up uh, is, are there some options that uh, preserve our commitment to the environmental community and get unanimous support today, um, and yet uh, allows us to keep with policy that says MICLA is the last resort? I know one of the suggestions you had given to Mr. Padilla was the idea and concept of committing the six, to two, two parts of this. One is uh, committing the $6.7 million of MICLA for non-eligible Prop O expenses that are consistent with Prop O um, and, and potentially whether or not we would then send that through the Prop O committee as well to ensure it is uh, consistent with the ideals of Prop O. And two, um, and I'm not sure, I'm sorry Mr. Parks, if you may have mentioned this earlier and it was something that Mr. Smith spoke to me about the other day, which was using 6.7 of the UB to go to jumpstart this project and it be reimbursed by uh, the bond measure. So that's, those are two items I'd like to, if you could answer, what would be eligible for MICLA funding that is not eligible for Prop O funding? Well, the only thing eligible for Prop O funding is real property, something that is, is there and, and, and affixed. So any equipment related to Prop O, again, the street sweeping and, and part of the trash TMDL is, again, getting the trash off the street so it does not end up in the storm drains and in the river. Uh, the equipment necessary to clean the catch basins themselves. Uh, if we move forward and do parks and cistern projects with, for stormwater capture and we have uh, you know, uh, uh, potentially playground equipment, if that's part of the park, would be eligible, but any of the maintenance equipment for that park would not. All of that would have to be MICLET. That's, that's not a general obligation bond expenditure. Uh, so I, I think part of what sanitation and street services needs to do is to clearly define their program for purchasing this sort of equipment, their plans for maintaining the catch basins once they're installed, and identify what that obligation on the equipment is going to be. Uh, uh, for that portion of it. As to your second question, um, the council regularly advances money. Um, timing should not be an issue here. Um, the council can advance money with a reimbursement resolution that uh, enables us to reimburse it from PAPO when the bonds are issued. So, um, so sanitation and street services can proceed with the catch basins as expeditiously as possible. So it would not no, be held up. I, and I, go ahead. On that particular note, we have our commercial paper program that was developed for the express purpose of accelerating any project. And, and with that, um, we, can, we can reimburse the commercial paper program through um, the seal of, of proper bonds. The, um, one thing that's real important to recognize is that the MICLA funds are there. The, uh, today's action, I, I believe, as proposed by Councilman Parks, does not eliminate the MICLA funds. It's saying they, they should do proper first. When projects um, are identified that meet certain requirements, requirements related to the Clean Water Initiative, to bring them back on a case-by-case, -case, a project-by-project -project basis, and at that point, this council can decide whether or not we would then access the MICLA funds uh, for this particular for these particular programs or whatever initiatives or 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 equipment or whatever. I, I think the only difference um, in what you're saying that I would feel strongly about is is the commitment of those MICLA funds today. Um, not project specific, but saying in the action we take today that we are going to spend six point seven million dollars in MICLA funds for projects consistent with 
uh, Prop O. And I think that's the message the environmental community has sent with us today, is we have to say we are going to um, uh, spend this money for the purpose in which it was originally intended, which was a year ago, adopting. The, the current authorization that was part of the four or five budgets spoke to you know, the catch basins in particular, but also there's a reference to the clean, clean water efforts throughout the city. So the money um, has a specific designation right now. And it's not commingled with other MICLA funds. It's a, it's this very specific MICLA right now. That's part of our what well, was part of our four or five budget until this council decides to either um, to either change that designation or to um, or to uh, retire that that MICLA program by by um, one. We haven't sold the bonds yet because we weren't ready yet by not selling the bonds. The change in the action. Um, it, it yeah. essentially has been authorized. But uh, again, I think my, my only point, um, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is there anything wrong with us saying today, we are committing whatever the amount, and I think Mr. Uh, Garcetti has a, a, another idea, but whatever amount we decide today on the MICLA, that we take the position today, that is going to be for Prop O related um, projects. What, what I'd ask is not that you say Prop O related, but we can speak to clean water related programs because it won't, it won't meet the same requirements. That's consistent, I think the words I, I used earlier was consistent with PROPO. Oh, or if I, if no. I may just, add, or the, if I may just, okay. add, how about that are consistent with the PROPO criteria? How about something along those lines? Uh, I wouldn't say, the, see the criteria. <laughs> It speaks to real property. Right. We, there's some very stringent eligibility requirements. It should, maybe you can say that are consistent with the um, goals and objectives of Prop O, but right. not the criteria, because right. then you get into eligibility restrictions. So just the goals and objectives of Prop O, we would dedicate the Mickle money for that. And we're, we're, we cannot use Prop O money for, to achieve the goals and objectives, we'll use the Mickle money. That, that, I, I think that's, that's acceptable to me. I, I believe that would be acceptable to Ms. Gruel, and I think the crux of her question was about the propriety of our making that commitment today. And you're saying that as long as we wordsmith it along the lines you're suggesting, the commitment is acceptable. Yes. Mr. Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. Padilla. Um, and thank you, everybody, for this discussion. I, I want to make one quick correction. Um, just with a timeline, um, as, as you described it, Mr. Fujioka, there was no, nobody imagined or, or was talking about Propo when we passed this in the budget. I mean, those conversations I had with Mr. Deaton as the person who first launched that, there was abstract talk a year earlier when sanitation had looked at possibility of a bond. They had done some polling, it went through. We didn't poll for it till the summer after we had already passed this. We didn't then put the motion forward until August. And then we had that campaign that was very quickly, or the end of July. It might have been the end of July, but it was long after we had done the budget stuff. So we, we were, didn't put that in saying, well, we're not sure if Propo will pass. Let's put this in. We said, we've got these TMDLs to comply with, period. We've got these TMDLs to comply with, and we need some of the money. And that was just my conversations with, with Mr. Deaton. Unless there were conversations and motions that I never saw, um, that was that. The other thing, for the record, is we all, I, I think in this business, and I think we're headed towards the right resolution, but I just want to say this before. In this business, all, all that we have is our word, the, the, the 15 of us, which is, which is different than uh, private uh, negotiations that go on. The public negotiations that we had and what we said very publicly to the environmental community in these chambers, we could roll the tape back, was that this would not be used to supplant existing funding. We also made the commitment by putting Propo that we know that there's an obligation for maintenance that comes with that, in the same way that when we all we're looking at, uh, you know, or not all of us, but Prop Q a few years ago, we know that there are, there's maintenance that has to go into that that can't be a part of a bond. Bonds fund things, not necessarily the people. Um, but what I would say, and um, talking to Mr. Smith, uh, you know, one of the things we could do is we could keep the TMDL compliance in the MICLA program, all of it. We keep it in the program, and then as projects come forward, bring those projects to us, Maybe, Mr. Fujioka, if, just with this, if this would be an acceptable um, move forward, we could keep that line item there. We don't start paying interest on anything, so that would have to come forward. We keep that, that line item, we roll that over as part of the MICLA program, and then as we look at things in this coming year, there are things apparently that are not going to be PROPO eligible. And if I could invite the Bureau of Sanitation, Sharam, if you could come up for a second. 
Sharam, why don't you come on up? Bureau of Sanitation, I think part of this is that we need a clear direction from the Bureau of Sanitation. I think we can all agree on that. That if we kept this MICLA line item, and then hopefully this would be acceptable to Mr. Parks as well, because it, we're not spending anything out, we're not beginning to pay the interest, we're keeping that there. Then as there are things that move forward, this ensures that we will have that also as an option, one that keeps our word to the environmental community, fully keeps our word, and then is applied in this way to stuff that is not MICLA eligible, but that we're not waiting and putting it off to some indefinite date. Is there money, uh, is there non propo eligible stuff that in this coming year there could be a program to get us ahead of this game to get closer to uh, clean water compliance? Because that's our big worry here. Yeah. And before you answer that, the, the last point I want to make, and then, then I'd ask you to answer that. There seem to be two different arguments being made here. One was, and I appreciate the amazing work that CLA and the CAO does and that our budget chair does on, on, on guarding the budget, but I've heard two different arguments. One was, well, the interest, let's use Prop O because it's cheaper than, than, um, than MICLA. The calculations at 20 years, if we do 20 years, five to seven hundred thousand dollars, that's 25 to 40,000 a year. The difference between that and MICLA is probably about $10,000 a year that we're arguing about, if, if, if it indeed is an argument about which is the best form of interest to use. If it's not about the interest, let's take that off the table, then it's really about the principle. Are we going to put this money out there? And that leads me back to what we promised in these chambers and our public word that we would actually put this commitment out there in a budget process. $500 million is not enough. We all know it sitting at this table. We all know that. 500 million is not enough to comply with the TMDL. So in this coming year, if we had that in there, would there be stuff that we could move forward with in this coming year? Then I would be willing to roll that forward um, to say, okay, we screwed up. We didn't spend it out in the year that we thought we would, but nevertheless, we've kept our word. Uh, good morning, Shuram Karagani, Bureau of Sanitation. Council member, the, the simple answer would be the operation and maintenance cost. That would, those are the ones that would not be measured or eligible, obviously, so the money can be spent there. The stormwater program, all of our efforts, obviously, is toward cleaning the water, so most of those issues that are of capital nature would be measured or eligible. So I would say operation and maintenance would be those costs. Well, we're, we're not going to use MICLA funds for, uh, for staffing or for, for maintenance, but no. are there other non-personnel related items? I mean, certainly you could use either prop or MICLA on a lot of things. Hard cart. Again, the other... The, one more answer would be equipment, but those are again, my understanding of both Measure O and, and Proposed MICLA, both of them are for capital and equipment. Measure O is a little bit more, uh, more specific to what the money can be spent, mm -hmm. but the need of the stormwater program is capital costs and then operation and maintenance of them, for most part. Well, they, I'm, I'm no. sorry, and I know we're over. There, you brought up that there something else, the real property. Uh, right. There was some discussion early on about doing a special tax instead of a general obligation bond and funding equipment. The, the, but, but Prop O is a general obligation bond. It cannot be used for equipment. It can only be used for real property. So could you spend it on some equipment? Uh, to make money? Yes. To do the real property work? For the program at large, we have to talk to our Bureau of Street Services to see if there are some needs in their sister family to see if they have a needs for their equipment. Well, I think we clearly need that, that program. I think all of us would agree we, we, we need that, that leadership and that program to know. And it's not necessarily just sanitation that would do it, so I understand it's not in your area of specialization, but working together with the CAO and CLA, I think that's the kind of stuff we need to come forward. If it's acceptable to folks, I would put forward that we keep the line item. We don't spend anything out of it then, so that we keep that. We roll that over and it's in place. We don't start spending on the interest, and then we're able to fulfill that commitment and work out the details of what I believe the, the bureaus need to coordinate a little better with one another. Um, so that we A, keep that commitment, but B, also do the work that we know we're going to have to do beyond, above and beyond the 500 million. And Councilman, one more thing just came to my mind. We also have a, a vacuum trucks for cleaning of the catch basin ourselves. So I think that's another equipment that we could use the money for, for off of MICLA. Uh, Councilman, okay. what, we, Mr. Smith, just a second. what we will do as, as part of the commitment, because through the prop old process, we're, we're, we've developed, I, I feel very strongly we developed uh, uh, um, a partnership with the environmental community. As items are identified that can be funded through the MICLA program, we'll also discuss it through the Prop O committee so there'll be that true light of day, so there'll be the transparency for folks to see that we, we're not going to use the money for something other than what the intent has been expressed around this horseshoe. So we'll have that, that public discussion.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parks. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Garcia, I, I appreciate uh, formulating that. I think one of the things that we want to make sure, because I think we discussed it in 0405, that the 500 million is going to not cover everything we need. Eventually, we're going to have to either go out for another bond or we're going to have to find even more money from the general fund. Uh, one of the things I think when we said uh, job specific coming back, it could be more than 14 or 15 million. And so, again, we wouldn't want to limit it in the sense of saying that's all we're going to spend if we find other issues. So, again, we throw that out to the department and say, bring us your projects that are specific related to this. We've made that commitment. We've gotten propo, but we don't want to be in a situation that we're not going to take care of the sewers as we promised to do with them. We just want to do it in the fashion that we have the best use of our finances and we are smart in how we deal with it. So we don't want to say that's, that's the, uh, the, the top limit because we realize we may need another, I think at the time they said over 500 million might be the next bond fund. So these are the kind of dollars we're dealing with. So we still need you to bring us the, uh, the job specific so we can address them uh, as they go forward. I can't. Mr. Cardenas. Yes, I'd like to um, roll the tape forward to today and just let the people who are concerned about the environment, but more importantly, let the children and the families of Los Angeles know that this council today seems to be poised and ready to vote for a commitment of $500 million consistent with Prop O that the voters voted for, in addition to the $13 million. And as uh, Chairman of the Budget Committee Park said, we're probably going to go way beyond that $13 million in the coming years. Uh, whether it be bond fund or MICLA in the future or what have you, uh, that this council is poised to make that commitment. I wouldn't know because I'd be violating the Brown Act if I took a poll, but I think in a few minutes, I think uh, we will see that the commitment of these members of the council is in fact consistent with the commitments and the, and the, and the history of the recent council members who said that we want to make sure that we meet this responsibility to our environment. Thank you. Mr. Labange. Mr. President, Mr. Miller, I think you talked about street cleaning, didn't you? I did. Which is so important because one of the things that I'm very concerned about as we start this is all the trash that sometimes is in a uh, city basket that doesn't get picked up. Do you know what better commitment we can make to, because this starts the trash. When the, start, when the trash hits the sidewalk and then gets in the gutter, it gets in the gutter, it goes down the drain. What are we doing to increase this? And does any of this money go to help at the start of it, the trash basket on the corner? Well, again, it, it's all part of it. Obviously, the trash DMDL is meant to keep trash out of the LA River and, and the Bay. Uh, and and um, sanitation and street services are all working on programs to identify hot spots, to prioritize where they're going to put the catch basins, to increase the street sweeping. Um, there is six million dollars in the 0506 budget, uh, sp specifically two street services from the stormwater fund for purposes of street sweeping and catch basin cleaning. Now, now the how about dumping trash cans? Because that's what I think. When I uh, started that's with right. the city of Los Angeles, there was a 224 <laughs> guys who <laughs> rode trucksters, and their jobs were the little three wheelers. Their jobs were to clean catch basins downtown and in Hollywood and in Wilshire. Ventura Boulevard, wherever there were large concentrations of people. Right. But then that debris, and the debris comes from somewhere, and it starts, and if it misses the trash can, it gets in the drain. If it misses the drain, it goes down into the river right. and comes out into the ocean. What, do you know what our commitment is to this basic trash can maintenance? Because I see us spending $500 million, which is appropriate, which I support. But unless you have a regular program that maintains it, you stop it at the beginning, it's easier for uh, someone to pick this up than it is, and cheaper than to go down a drain. And yes, Mr. Parks, 86% of all debris is within a foot of the curb. Well, 86%. I mean, specifically what, what the programs are on frequency of pickup, et cetera, I think you'd need sanitation and street services to report back on. Right. But I think the point I'm making is, is that all of this includes best management practices. This is all not just spending money on capital improvements. It's also figuring out how to manage the trash better, how to identify hot spots and increase the frequency of sweeping and pickups. Um, where trash receptacles need to be. And Good. I think as we move forward and, and sanitation identifies the hot spots and working with street services and others to figure out how to develop a program right. that, that keeps it out of the catch basins in the first place. So I think what you need is, is the bureaus to report back on 
on, on their plans on right. proceeding with these. And also, I just last in closing, uh, and you could run that clock, Madam Clerk. Uh, it just all starts right here. Unless you get it right here that it's more expensive to build more systems, and the cleaner it is. I just did return back from Japan, which is absolutely immaculate, uh, and that uh, uh, commitment that they make to the area. Also, members, I do have a proposal coming to litter law to have it more aggressive, where we find uh, people for littering more at a reasonable instead of $1,000, where no one has been uh, cited for a fine of uh, litter in Los Angeles, but a lower fee and a more aggressive uh, action by Public Works and uh, other agencies would go a long way of helping keep trash and debris out of the streets and make this the greatest city in the world. Cletus City. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Labanche. Other members of the council wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none on uh, um, the matter as amended. And that would be the EQ committee report that was moved by Council Member Parks. As amended. Do we need to repeat the amending motions? Well, there was the first amending motion was Mr. Parks um, that job specific, not proper eligible, would come back to council for potential source of funding. And council member Gruel's motion, or well, was that to, the, to commit the 6.7 MICLA? I, I think we're superseding Mr. Parks' motion and my, I don't think I officially moved it, but by Mr. Garcetti's, which is the $13 million in MICLA funding for the purposes as outlined a year ago when we included in the budget. Is that correct, Mr. Garcetti? Or maybe expand the TMDL compliance in general. And non-measurable eligible. Right. Okay, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. How about we send that forthwith? And next item, please. Uh, next item, Mr. President, there is a special one, uh, Council Member Parks for Reyes and seconded by Council Member Patilla. The City Attorney will speak to the findings. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. President. On Sunday, June 5th, 82 rental units were destroyed by fire at 720 South Westlake Avenue. Immediate action is required to authorize the Housing Department to provide tenant relocation assistance for these displaced tenants. Council must first make findings pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.2 before considering the substantive motion. Anybody wishing to speak on the findings? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Uh, motion is now before us. On the motion itself, Mr. Parks. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd ask the Housing Department to come up. Uh, basically, for Mr. Reyes, uh, we had an incident that occurred on Sunday, June 5th. Uh, where fire destroyed 82 units in the South Westlake Avenue area uh, of Mr. Reyes's district. And we'd ask the Housing Department to give us a thumbnail of what occurred and why this emergency currently exists and why these funds are necessary. Okay. Ken Simmons from the Housing Department. Uh, a fire uh, occurred this past weekend. Uh, there was approximately 200 uh, people that were displaced from two buildings, 720 Westlake, um, uh, approximately 82 uh, uh, different apartments had to be vacated and uh, can't be re-entered and there's going to be extensive work that needs to be done to bring these uh, buildings back into uh, habitability. We have a tenant relocation program uh, in the city but the tenant relocation program that has been approved by the council ordinance only allows the city to extend money through that program if there's a code violation. Uh, if there's a code violation at the site we can recover the money from the owner because it is the fault of the owner. In the circumstance of a fire the owner is not at fault. But as a, a pr previous president, the council has made findings in these types of emergency situations to extend uh, relocation money from the general fund. Uh, we've done it at a collapsed building at Echo Park, uh, a, a fire at the Palomar Hotel in Hollywood, and we most recently did it for a nuisance abatement on 69th and Main. So it requires that the council extend uh, the general fund money to provide relocation. The housing department has a list of the tenants. They've been verified by the police department who actually uh, did a recovery program, let the tenants back in the building, and we will uh, participate in distributing the money to those tenants. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. LeBond, you should know that the uh, people that have been displaced, many of them are housed at John Marshall High School. I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, the other issue is that for, just in the dollars, 
$344,000 is left over from the relocation fund for the uh, recent flooding that we will now use and also uh, move $187,000 from the reserve fund to give uh, the allocation to the housing department. So we ask I vote on that. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Forthwith, please. And at this time, Mr. Laban, she had a motion for reconsideration. Uh, Mr. President, Madam Clerk, can we ask that we reconsider the item taken up on Friday? You have the number right in front of you. Yes, that was item number 33, and the council files are 030580 and 002219, and that's regarding the public way reservation system. Good, uh, Mr. President, if that's okay, I can have a brief report from uh, Deputy City Engineer Clark Robbins, who uh, members, we talk about the river and clean it up. Clark was responsible for our restoration of our great historic river bridges. Thank well, let's, you for let's that first, in the past. Mr. Labange, let's first actually vote on your motion for reconsideration. Thank you. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. And now that the item is back before us. Thank you very much. You know, uh, members, we all talk about trying to reduce impacts of uh, traffic uh, in our streets related to construction and other issues there. And our Bureau of Engineering, uh, under the direction of Clark Robbins, has correctly uh, come up with a plan. And this is a motion that Mr. Zine was so, so helpful to second on. Uh, and it directs the Department of Transportation, LAPD, and the Department of Public Works to review the policies on non-emergency activity in the street. Uh, Mr. Robbins, if you could give us a little uh, report, I'd appreciate it. Sure. <clears throat> Uh, this ordinance would require anyone who has, uh, who proposes an activity within the public way to take out a reservation before doing that. And it's a web-based uh, system so that the, whoever is going to reserve a space within the public way would have to look at that particular space and evaluate uh, anything else that's going on at that time in that place that might conflict and coordinate their reservation with any existing reservations. Uh, in addition, they would have to consider traffic conditions, rush hour, and so forth. So uh, it, you know, the uh, ordinance also requires each city department to appoint a public way reservation officer who would be responsible for approving uh, reservations for that department. I think we have the support of just about everybody uh, that we haven't always had support from. The film industry, for example, is quite enthusiastic about this, and they're looking forward to better coordinating their own activities within the public way in, in the filming area. Uh, all the we've met with all the departments. They're w ready, willing, and able to do this, and we think it'll help uh, uh, reduce traffic congestion. Yeah, uh, Deputy Engineer Robbins, thank you. Lim Paco, thank you uh, as the uh, assistant city engineer who uh, assisted in that role here. Members, when we talk about banning construction during traffic hours, when we talk about trying to coordinate, this is a system that's going to work. We focus that this ordinance will be implemented on a one-year pilot program. It will be uh, basically confined to the area uh, from the Cahuenga Pass to 120th Street, uh, from uh, Robinson Boulevard on the west to the city limits on the east. And this will apply to entities to engage in any work on city streets. It does not apply uh, to activities that are four hours or less or temporary repairs. And it does not apply to emergency work on city streets. But it's all the classified major secondary highways or collector streets in the transportation element of the general plan. This is something we worked on a long way. This pilot program hopefully will be expanded citywide. And it, it will make a difference in trying to people move uh, through our communities uh, with this coordination. Members, I thank you for allowing us to reconsider it because I wanted to give this great deputy city engineer and, and Lim Paco an opportunity to present it and ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you Mr. Labange. Are there members wishing to speak? Seeing none, let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That is approved. Next item. Uh, Mr. President, uh, there was an, uh, an amending motion that has come forward after an item was adopted. Uh, item number eight was already adopted, and there is a motion 8A that has been distributed. Do you wish to reconsider yeah. number eight? Let's open the roll on reconsideration of item number eight. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. Eleven ayes. Item eight is now back before us. We have that amending motion that has been circulated. Any discussion? 
all, all we're asking is that uh, controller instructions on the disbursement of funds uh, from the city attorney's account that deals with outside counsel. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing further, let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That item is approved. We'd like forthwith on number seven. Forthwith on item number seven. Next item. Uh, next item, Mr. President, Council has motions for posting and referral. Motion shall be posted and referred. There are excuses on the desk. Council Member Reyes requests to be excused June 17th and June 24th for city business. A motion is required on the 24th. Mr. LaBange moves. Those excuses are granted. Council Member Gruel requests to be excused June 8th to leave at noon. A motion is required. Ms. Han moves. Ms. Gruel is excused. And Council Member Ludlow requests to be excused June 8th to leave at 11.15. A motion is required. Uh, Mr. Zine moves. That excuse is granted. And that clears the desk. Okay. Colleagues, that's the end of our agenda today. Do we have any announcements? Any announcements? If not, do we have any adjourning motions today? If we don't have any adjourning motions, ah, we do. Would everybody please rise for adjourning motions? Ms. Misikowski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, uh, I wasn't here the first part of last week, otherwise I would have done this in a more timely manner, but I am asking Council to adjourn in the memory of Eddie Albert. He died uh, on May 27th at the age of 99 and had been a 60-year resident of the city in Pacific Palisades. And he was a remarkable man, really revered in the Pacific Palisades area as just a regular citizen there who came into Mortz, participated every way he could, and particularly participated uh, in helping promote and commit to the environment, both in his own personal garden and in things that he had done worldwide. Um, we all know him as the actor. He was most famous for Green Acres, but he really had a career that spanned every form of entertainment, radio, stage, t TV, as well as movies. Uh, in World War II, he enlisted in the Navy, served as a lieutenant um, in the Pacific, uh, and was revered for that. He then, afterwards, in the early, early uh, after leaving the, the service, continued his work on environmental concerns, and in fact, in 1972, sort of beginning of the dawn of the environmental movement as we know it, participated in world, uh, world uh, seminars dealing with the issue of banning pet pesticides and DDT. And he probably came to that because of his own love of gardening and his fear of what we were doing with, our, with nature, with garden, with plants, with foods that we were eating. So he had really, really many hats, but mostly he wore his hats very comfortably as a very, very approachable man. Uh, nothing standoffish, nothing Hollywood or starstruck about him. He would invite people, whether at the senior center or just meeting at Mort's Deli, you know, come on over and have a cup of coffee, let me give you some tomatoes. Uh, he obviously was uh, at a wonderful um, lifetime marriage to his wife, Margot, who preceded him in death uh, some time ago, I think in the mid-80s. Uh, but she also was a very uh, forthright position, per person in her own right in what she did in her community and with him. Uh, Eddie is survived by his son, Edward, and a daughter, Mia. And for the 60 years that he lived in the Palisades, I think every person there who ever ran across him consider themselves a friend and a, and a supporter and an admirer. So he is very, very, very much missed. All members. Other tributes? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned. City View, Channel 35.
your city, your channel.